Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of Royalton, Minnesota. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of corn silage. And so we planted this cornfield with the intent of uh, getting some silage for feeding our cows. And we've got this awesome pull behind uh, harvester here, forager, I guess I'd call it. And so we're going to try and do this. Now, originally I had the... A trailer hooked up to this directly, but that was proving to be a little bit of a pain unhooking it and emptying it And so we are going to make an attempt here to uh, Use course play to do the harvesting and then I've got the forage wagon here hooked up to the 6r and we're gonna use that to run around and uh, Empty things out. Uh, we're also gonna potentially try and set up an auto drive course for this at some point if this works out if it doesn't work out, we're going to just use uh, follow me and do this manually. Uh, it's a pretty decent sized field though, and so we're going to have to see uh, how much of this will actually fit in the silo. Now these forage harvesters typically have a pretty wide uh, throw distance here, so I'm not too worried about it, but I'm looking at this and it looks like this guy does need to be offset. So we're going to come in here and we're going to adjust the offset distance i think this one is gonna work and we're gonna move this to i think it's 2.4 is the width of the uh, forage harvester here and so if i let that work like so and then we pull forward here i would expect that tractor to start working its way off the field, but I don't see that actually happening here. So let me jump back over here and see what we can do. Oh, not lane offset probably. My bad. Let's try tool offset horizontal. I'll try not to drive on our potatoes here either. This will get easier after we get the field opened up. And that looks like it might have done the trick. Kind of hard to tell when there's the curvy bits, so I'm not too worried about missing a corn stalk here or there. What I'm worried about is just making sure I have the appropriate working width set on uh, this machine so that course play is picking things up as it should. If I look at this pull type forage harvester, this is 1.5 meters. Interesting. Uh, this isn't the one we're using, though. This one is. This one's set up, where's my thing, as 1.5 meters. Oh, interesting. I think when we generated the course, it detected it as uh, 2.4 or something like that. So let's jump back in here. Stop driver. Course generation. Yeah. So this number is way too wide. This needs to be 1.5. And if we generate the course, oops, I didn't mean to do it from the current vehicle position. Uh, let's do from the southeast corner. And just taking a quick look at it here, that should be good to go. And then we're gonna just restart this course from the nearest waypoint. And we can clean that other part up here in a little bit. And it looks like we're going to need fuel soon, but I want to make it at least one time around the headlands here. I'm hoping this is going to line us up oh, so much better. And we'll just follow this guy around for one of the headlands now. I'm beginning to think maybe we should have just used uh, Hollow Me to get the field opened up. It's just hard to uh, keep the following tractor out of the woods and out of the ditch and stuff when you're uh, also driving another tractor so we're gonna run with this and see what happens but i'll be honest i'm kind of excited just to get uh, course play running on a course like this uh, it's been a little bit since i've done anything with a pull behind style uh, forage wagon so we're super excited this is actually working and we've got quite a bit of chaff here so I'm excited that we're going to have plenty of silage for our uh, cows here soon. I'm uh, wishing right now that I had the vehicle speed sync uh, mod installed. I forgot to put that on this save. And so we're kind of trying to control this a bit manually right now uh, with
without getting too much into our other tractor's work area here. We are getting into the bushes. I guess this thing throws the chaff pretty far, so I could probably be back here a bit. I just, uh, we're right on the edge of the throw distance here sometimes, and so the tractor keeps stopping to let me catch up, and I don't want him to slow down anyway. I want him to keep going, and we ran out of fuel. Ooh, I thought we'd at least make it back up to the farm. Uh, let's just, uh, hop out here and figure that one out. Of course, play must stop before it gets completely empty, just to give you a chance to get it back up to the farm and put some fuel in. Now, what I don't know is, do we have uh, a fuel pump anywhere on the farm here? I kind of haven't had to refuel anything yet, so we're just going to take a quick look around. This is a pre-made farm, so I didn't build out the buildings and such, and so normally I would put a fuel barrel down somewhere, but it doesn't look like we've got one. So I'm going to park this right in here because I think the fuel barrel is going to get added right alongside uh, the shed here. And so let's uh, see what options we've got to put a fuel barrel here. So with that, we're going to go ahead and fill this tractor up here real quick. It's going to take up uh, most of uh, the remaining money we've got, it looks like, to do this refill. And we're going to get this guy right back out in the field chopping some more corn so that we can uh, test out getting some of this uh, chaff into the silage bunker here or the silage silo uh, I think it's gonna work just fine I'm not too worried about it all right so we're all fueled up we're back out here in the field let's uh, finish getting things opened up here we'll uh, probably take a moment to go unload this trailer here as soon as we get to the end of this row and uh, I think we need to restart the forage harvester off on the outside of this field again um, just because we did miss an entire row all the way down and uh, on top of just annoying me uh, that's also going to probably cause issues with pathfinding and such here so uh, we're going to just go take care of all of these things. Um, now we're 100% full, so I am going to bring this right up here to the silos. And we're going to just go ahead and get this unloaded. And then as you can see, this cart is a little bit slow on the unload, so we're going to get this going. We've got a little bit of chaff in here, not a ton, um, but we have been turning that into silage and we already put quite a bit into uh, this container here and so I think at this point we're just waiting for some alfalfa to grow so we can turn it into hay. Uh, we've got this field over here if we just come check on that while the uh, cart is unloading here. Uh, all this alfalfa is coming up pretty nicely. Check it with the seasons tool here. We're at 50% growth and so if we actually jump into the menu here and take a look at this field uh, I think we're going to see that it's in this darker green stage, so I would expect this to get to a ready-to-harvest stage uh, probably in the next day or two with seasons. Um, this is actually the planted stage for that field of alfalfa we planted last time, so uh, we're getting to be in a pretty good spot here. We're about to have a lot more work to do than we know what to know how to keep up with it, so... The unload speed, though, on this uh, forage wagon is almost unbearably slow. And so I'm not sure uh, what to do about that. I really think we should get a second one. Uh, I don't know if I can afford it, though. We're already uh, pretty far in debt here. But if we don't get something, I think this is going to take just too long. So we're going to take a little bit of a loan out and we're going to see what we can do here. If we just go for a small one here we can get this going. I, I don't remember how big the other one was that we have, but we're going to go ahead and just take out a loan, get a second one going here, uh, and we're going to set up a uh, course here and try and get both of these going. And so we're going to use the 7R. This is a bit of a overkill here for what we've got, but uh, in true farmer fashion, we're going to use the equipment we've got available to us. So uh, I'm thinking 
Uh, this is going to be a little bit hard with the duels, though, to get in there and use. So I'm going to run this one manually once and just see how bad of an idea this is. And uh, maybe we'll go shop around for another older tractor. And I think this is actually going to work out. I mean, the duels do stick out a little ways here, but uh, not so far that I think it's going to be a problem for keeping up with this forage harvester. So we're going to go ahead and run with this. And uh, as soon as we get back up to the other end here, I'm going to set this guy to start unloading. And then we are going to set up some automation for this. Now, I could do this with course play pretty easily. Um, I know how to do a forage unload course with course play. I've done that in uh, some other series in the past. But what I really want to try out is the auto drive option. I've had a few people tell me that uh, auto drive is now capable of unloading on the go specifically for uh, forage harvesting. And I'd really like to uh, test that out here. And so we're going to do that as soon as we get back up to the uh, far corner of the field there by the farm. All right, we got a little bit into the zone and kept going down the uh, far side here. So we're circling around our potato field uh, because there wasn't enough room to turn around. And we're going to bring this 7R back up to the farm here and get it lined up to start unloading here and go ahead and uh, set up our course with the 6R. And I'm trying to think about what we're going to do here um, as far as setting this up. In fact, I think maybe what I'll do is completely move this tractor out of the way because uh, I forgot we don't have the course set up just yet. And so we are going to use this 7R that we've got to set up the course. Uh, just because it's a here and full and we're gonna be able to see where our unload point is so we're gonna start right here with auto drive and we're gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna get my view set up a little bit better here so I can see what we're doing and we're gonna say record and we'll come back and edit the point later but this is gonna be our field point here and so this is field uh, 31 and then we're just gonna continue this on so that at some point down the road if I decide to start setting up more auto drive courses we can add into that and we're just gonna come right back in here and stop recording and then if I back up out of the way a smidge, I can join these two together. And then I need to give it a name. And so I'm going to pull forward here until I get to this point. And I'm going to give this one a name of Silage Silo. And all I should have to do now at this point is change this into unload combine mode. I'm going to set the target to field 31. I'm going to set the unload to silage silo. We're going to turn off edit mode and drive. And what we'll be able to see here immediately is that we're already unloading our chaff. And so I'm going to get in here and fix our cruise control just so that he's able to move as fast as he needs to. And then we're going to go grab the uh, smaller tractor here, the 6R, and get him going on the same thing. And they should be able to work independent of each other without crashing into each other. Um, I find in general that auto drive is pretty good about this. And so all I need to do is kind of bring myself up here to get pointed the right way and tell auto drive to go and what should happen is he's going to get to this uh peeled point and then he's going to look and see if there's any uh harvesters that are calling for a loader all right so it looks like all i had to do on this worker is to come into auto drive and set the same field target 
and the driver showed up to come and start unloading me. And so I'm going to let that run here and we're going to jump into this tractor and just take a look at some of his settings. I think ideally I would like him to be a little bit closer to the forage harvester. He's doing a good job. I don't want them crashing into each other, uh, but we are crowding a little bit far away. And so if we just come in here and take a quick look, we've got some settings here under the vehicle settings and it looks like distance to combine we can drop this down i'm gonna drop it down to one meter and see if uh, we get a little bit closer here to him and that will hopefully uh, reduce our chances of running into something or going into the ditch and pipe offset i'm gonna drop that down to five as well i think this is how far left and right away from the pipe i am and so if i do both of those it should move me in just a little bit closer uh, to this uh, unloader. And what you can see is that we are uh, doing a good job of keeping up. I know uh, this forage harvester slows down every time he has to turn a little bit around these curved edges. Once we get the headlands off, though, that shouldn't really be a problem. And now that we do have the headlands going, um, this is working pretty good. And so for people that have been curious about whether or not um, auto drive can unload on the go, the answer is not for combines, at least not yet, but for forage harvesters, it appears to be working. And so this is super exciting. Uh, it's a big change from uh, what we've been able to do in the past uh, because I think auto drive does a better job of driving on the road and doing things now here's an issue that we're about to run into with uh where we set up our auto drive course uh the waiting vehicle is going to be kind of in the way here for uh what we're trying to do and so this uh, 6410 is slowing down because it's in traffic but it looks like he's gonna be able to figure it out oh we just nudged the front of that 7r but we're going to take that because uh, course play probably would have just stopped. Now, we are really close to these potatoes. Uh, we're technically probably driving over a few of these potatoes. Uh, but we're going to just uh, let this go. I'm not going to monkey with it too much. Uh, because when if it's working, don't, uh, don't mess with it. All right, so this forge wagon got full and unfortunately was not able to pathfind around the field so it is just driving through the corn here but you can see the 7r is already on its way to take over and so that's really exciting i'm wondering if once we get a little bit more of the headlands off if this won't be quite as big of a problem uh we'll have to see either way uh from an automation perspective at least this is working pretty well uh, from a realism perspective, I think Courseplay probably does a better job of uh, would have picked up and not driven over the corn in this situation. But one thing I will say about auto drive is, at least so far for what we're doing, it's a lot less uh, intensive. Um, I don't see the huge frame rate drops every time we need to uh, pathfind to do something new. And so that is a... A uh, huge win over course plays. You don't see the big lag spikes. And it's pulling up here and unloading without any issue. So uh, I feel confident that this is going to continue to work. I wish that the uh, forage wagon driver here wasn't so much speed up, stop, speed up, stop to keep up. That it was a little bit smoother. Um, that's one other kind of difference I've noticed between course play and auto drive here is that uh, course play tends to be a little bit smoother when adjusting its speeds but uh, as I mentioned earlier auto drive is way less of a burden on your computer so I'm uh, able to run these two unloaders with uh, no noticeable lag or drops in my FPS where I guarantee if I had an unload course for course play every time the uh, harvester called for a new unloader that we'd be seeing a lag spike so uh, really kind of liking this I love auto drive for transporting things and you can see that that 7r is unloading there in fact we're gonna hop out real quick and run over here it is oh actually not unloading 
I think we need to just move this point ever so slightly forward. And so we're going to do that real quick because uh, I was worried that we'd come in and just not quite uh, be in the right spot. So if I pull this forward a bit, because the way auto drive works is it kind of continues to pull into a point. And so as soon as it detects a trigger, it'll stop. And so I'm going to stop editing this and we're going to turn the course off. I'm going to back this guy up uh, ever so slightly. And then we're going to start this off again. And he should now pull up until he gets to the unload point. There we go. Liking that a lot better. And here we can see here we're already at uh, 130,000 liters of chaff in the uh, silo. And we've got 19,000 liters of processed silage already so this is gonna work out really good i'm super excited all right so it looks like things are moving pretty good here auto drive's still a little bit odd about uh driving uh, off on the side here into our potatoes but that's to be expected the forage harvester is uh doing its thing picking up uh all this corn Oh, and this is the uh, other problem, is that we don't stay on the field, so uh, we do have a tendency to find our way into the ditch or into some trees from time to time. Now, uh, due to the weird angled rows here, course play kind of decided to har not harvest the outside part here, which has caused us just a little bit of problems because auto drive is trying to avoid the fruit. And so when we get to the end row like this, auto drive just kind of stops and it doesn't want to necessarily go forward, but it kind of inches forward trying to find its way into this uh, path with no fruit. And so you've got to have some respect for auto drive in that it's figuring it out, but it does slow us down just a little bit. Uh, but as we take a couple passes here, this should go a little bit faster. And so what we can do here is uh, grab this guy manually ourselves and just follow the forage harvester here. And this will work without any problems. Uh, the only reason it slows down so much with auto drive is the constant stopping and starting because it's kind of like a rubber band as far as if uh, you get too far away, course play slows down and then uh, you slam into the back and it's just back and forth back and forth so to avoid that rubber banding effect we're just going to drive this one manually now the other danger is that auto drive is going to come in, out and try and figure out how to get here uh, to start unloading with the other wagon uh, since it doesn't detect another auto drive uh, worker doing its job here so that's okay I haven't had auto drive run into me yet and so I think it's going to do an okay job of sitting back there. And so what I want to do is get to the end row here. And then we will uh, stop course play and take over this harvester and get rid of this little bit of corn uh, that we're leaving on the edge of the field here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just stop this 6R here for a minute. We're going to grab this 6410 stop driver and whip back around here and go take this on. Now that auto drive driver is still driving, which is interesting. Is auto drive capable of unloading me on the go? Oh, we just clipped that guy. Um, the fact that auto drive is still moving right now is actually really fascinating. Uh, I'm gonna be thoroughly impressed if auto drive is able to unload me on the go. And so let's see what happens here as we turn course play off. Course play is off. Um, it doesn't look like he's coming to get me. All right, so I was overly hopeful there, apparently. We're going to move this 6R out of the way, though, and actually line him up with follow me because uh, I think that's how we're going to have to tackle unloading uh, the forage harvester here. So if I do a 
left control F. We should get this guy right up on our left side here. And potentially move him a little bit closer here. Now I'm driving all over the place, so let's get lined up just a bit better. And let's move him a little bit closer as well. Something like that. And I probably need to get a GPS track set up for this. So we don't have GPS on this little tractor, so that's going to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, in that we can't set up GPS. So we're just going to have to do this manually. Uh, I do want to potentially back this guy off and move him a little bit closer. 0.5 meters is pretty far when it comes to fine tuning for uh, this little pull behind forage harvester though. So maybe in hindsight we do want to just have him uh, up at zero. And I mean this works but with this tiny little uh, forage harvester it's a little bit difficult and look at that the auto drive uh, cart is actually trying to come and unload me so if I turn off this other guy and we whip around here it looks like auto drive is going to unload me on the go while I harvest so let's uh, let's see what that's all about um, it appears to be smart enough to unload my forage harvester that I'm driving. So this is something that uh, we've wanted back in course play for a long time to have an overloader that could come out and unload a manually driven harvester. And it looks like auto drive is capable of doing that for us. So. I hadn't even thought to test this. This is a huge breakthrough. Um, I'm going to be doing some more forage harvesting in the future if I can have automated workers drive my carts for me while I'm actually driving, not having course play do the driving. Um, this is huge. And so I'm all suddenly super, super geeked that uh, we've uncovered just brand new functionality here. Um, Auto drive is uh, doing something that we've been wanting in the game for quite a while. Uh, now I'm having a hard time turning tight enough here. I'm glad that I've got crop destruction off while we were kind of sorting this out. And so we're gonna we're gonna test this theory a little bit more. We're gonna see what it takes for this 7R to catch back up with us. Um, I'm not sure what kind of pathfinding he needs to do to get over here again. And so this is maybe the only part of this that'll be a struggle but if you were running a bigger forage harvester and we'd take in significantly more off the headlands to give us some room uh i think auto drive's gonna be the new go-to for uh people trying to do forage work uh because this is just so much nicer than other options now he's gonna go and try and unload on the right side is what he's detecting right now it looks like which is Maybe not super useful, so hopefully he comes in here behind me. And if I had a little bit better of a forage harvester that had a longer throw, we'd uh, probably be in a better spot. It looks like the pathfinding is figuring out that he needs to be behind or to my left. He needs to catch up just a bit here to take our chaff. Definitely worked better when uh, he was on my side and we were in the middle of the field. So, because here where we have the rubber banding, we're going to lose some corn, I think. So maybe if I slow down just a smidge, um, we won't lose him as often. But it does seem to be a little bit of a problem here where pathfinding can't figure out where he needs to be. So... I am going to stop this auto drive guy here real quick uh, because we're just losing corn as he's not able to figure things out. But um, knowing that this can work at all is impressive. 
So I have to say I'm uh, pretty amazed that auto drive is able to keep up with our uh, self-driven combines. This is going to be a big game changer for me for stuff like this. I really hope at some point uh, that they also figure out how to do the same thing for uh, overloaders. Uh, because if they can pull that off, I could see so many people making the jump from course play to auto drive for any kind of a grain transport system. Uh, the overload mode is, you know, really the last big headache that I've got with uh, course play. And so the sooner we can come up with an alternative to that, uh, the happier a lot of people are going to be. Uh, because course play works great for field work and stuff like that, but this overload stuff has just been really difficult. And so I'm super, super excited to see this working. Now, uh, reminder, we're not using auto drive just at the moment. This is uh, us using follow me uh, with this guy um, at right now uh, because we are kind of going all over the place. And so if I was just going up and down rows in a more meaningful manner, I think that uh, auto drive would be handling this no problem. But uh, while we're kind of all over the place trying to clean this corn up so that we don't have problems with pathfinding, um, I think we're in a good spot. And it looks like our 6R is about to come back out here. And quite honestly, I think this 7R is getting pretty full here. So let's uh, pick up the last little bits here. And then uh, we'll switch out here as our uh, 6R gets caught up. Um, I'm hoping I can take one little run here, though, with the 7R uh, while we wait for the other tractor. We'll uh, notice that the 7R is full when we stop piping into him as we're driving here. And so it has been a little bit of uh, messing around to get this going, but I think that... Um, this is probably the better option compared to course play uh, for unloading. The fact that auto drive is going to be able to unload a forage harvester without a actual worker is amazing. And um, yeah, I don't think this field is actually going to take that long to finish now that we've kind of got things automated and continuing to move on. And so uh, at this point, I think it makes sense for us to let the workers finish the silage for us and we'll check back in next episode to see how we're doing. Um, I just want to make sure that this is actually going to work now that we've removed all of the excess corn on the other end of the field here. I expect this guy to just uh, kind of keep going here. We are going to drive through the ditch each time, just due to the nature of uh, following the course bike driver who's going to drive on the outside of the field like this every time. Um, I think that's due to the offset that we have on the uh, worker um, and why he isn't a little bit further into the field there. But as you can see, now that we don't have any obstructions here from pathfinding, the auto drive worker just gets right up here and keeps going. And so I think that... Uh, in order for him to keep up, we're in a good spot here where the distance to combine is set at zero here. And so this seems to just be working without any problems whatsoever now. Uh, we're keeping up here a little bit of rubber banding behind the uh, forage harvester, but um, not really a big deal. We're going to let the workers uh, finish this up and we'll keep an eye on it and check back in next episode if uh, we run into anything else of uh, interest. But... I'm super excited right now. That's all for today. Ketterk, out.